right, so today we're going to do day two. Yesterday we did day one. You had to do it without me because I wasn't here. I know. I will go over day one really quick. So for day one, it was just kind of an intro to angles. You've seen a lot of it before, but it's been a long time. So we talked about that an angle is just two rays that share an initial point. So the sides, I'll zoom in a little bit. The sides are the rays. So ray MH, ray MS, those are my sides. Your initial point is called the vertex, so point M is the vertex. The interior is the space between the sides, so all of this is the interior. So point J is in the interior of angle a HMS. Now, there's no such thing as a midpoint of an angle because there's not one point that's exactly in the middle. Okay? So there will be, we'll talk about a ray that cuts the whole thing in half, so you could have a whole ray that cuts the angle in half, but there's not a single point that does that, okay? When you name an angle, the vertex has to be in the middle, so my B here has to be in the middle, my E has to be in the middle, my H has to be in the middle, and then the other two letters go around it. If you just have two rays in your figure, you can use just the vertex to name it. So I could call this just angle B, angle E, angle H. But a lot of the times we're going to have more than two rays coming out of the same vertex. I've got three rays here, which means I have three different angles. I've got FAD on top, I have DAB on the bottom, and then I have the fabulous angle FAB as the whole thing together. Right? So if you follow the fab, the fad of dabbing, you're fabulous. No? Okay. <laughs> See, you missed my jokes when I'm not here. You missed that one. Okay. Then we talked about measuring angles. Now, when we measure angles, and on your assignment, I'm going to give you a couple degrees either way. So, because I know the pictures were a little fuzzy. But when you measure the angles, a lot of times you look at the two numbers and you're not sure which one to use because. When I line up my angle, I can see that as I come out, first I hit right here. Let me zoom in again. First I hit right here between the 50 and the 60, so 55. And then if I keep going, I fall between the 120 and the 130, so 125. But how did I know it was the small one? Okay. I mean, we could think kind of logically and say, well, this angle doesn't open even all the way up to 90, so it's got to be acute, so it's got to be the smaller of the two numbers, right? Um, but mathematically, as opposed to logically, if we look at where we're starting, when you are all the way at your starting point, when we start to count, we don't start at 180. We start from zero. zero. So we start here and then we open that angle up and so that's how I can tell I'm using the inside numbers to get to this 55. Okay? If I were to turn this this way, then when I look out at my numbers, I'm not going to start at this 180, so I'm not going to use the inside numbers because we don't start counting at 180, we start counting from zero. And so we start counting the angle degrees as we go out and we can see we land between 50 and 60 at the 55 degrees. Okay, so does that help you if you were struggling using the protractor yesterday, whether you're looking at the inside numbers or the outside numbers? Yes. Okay, if not, we can, can work on it a little bit more after the notes today. And then we talked about the different types of angles, and you've seen all of them before except the last two. We added on a straight angle is looks like a straight line. It's 180 degrees, and then if you're looking at the back side of an angle, we call that a re reflex angle. So if it's bigger than 180, so it's bigger than a line, and then under 360, because 360 you're going to be starting over again as you're going around, right? Because 360 is all the way around. Those are called reflex angles. Okay? To find a reflex angle, you have to find the angle that's not the reflex angle, because our protractor won't measure something over 180 degrees. And then you just subtract it from that 360 from the whole thing. Okay? So hopefully that helps you with what we did yesterday. But let's look at today's notes. Today we're going to look at adjacent angles. Does anybody know the word adjacent? What it means? Next to, right next to. Okay, right now I'm next to my desk. Right, you're next to whoever you're sitting next to. Okay, so 
a lot of times we'll get confused. When I look up here, it says two angles are adjacent if they share a side and their vertex. And then I know it's in parentheses, but it's super important. They may not overlap. Okay, so one can't be on top of the other. So, for example, if my cat gets on the couch and sits next to me, we are adjacent. If my cat gets in my lap, we're no longer adjacent. She's on my lap, right? So, next to is adjacent. If it's overlapping, it's not. And we'll look at what that means. Okay? All right. So, we are going to look at these angles. The first one I'm going to look at is angle NET. If you have a hard time finding them, if you kind of trace them as you read them, it'll highlight that angle for you. So, for example, if I'm looking for angle NET, N E T, if I highlight it with my pen or pencil or marker, whatever I'm using, then I can see this angle that I just marked in blue is angle NET. Okay? And I'm going to be used comparing that to angle. U E N. So U E N. This orange angle here. Would you say those angles are next to each other? Yes. They share this vertex. They share ray E W. And they're not overlapping each other. They're just right next to each other. So this one is, yes, they are adjacent. Okay. The next one, UEN, which I've already marked, right? That's the same angle as this one up here, UEN. And TEU. So TEU starts here at T, goes to E, and then goes way out to U. So TEU is this whole angle here. That's TEU. Are those angles adjacent? Are they next no. to each other? No. no. If you look, that orange angle is inside the giant pink angle. It's like sitting on the left. They're overlapping. Does that make sense? Yes. So it can't be inside, it can't overlap. Okay, we could think this one is overlapping because it's going on top of orange. Or we can think of orange as inside the pink. So these we're going to say are non adjacent. Non adjacent. Okay. All right, then we're going to have angle UES. U E. S. Is this purple angle right here? And U E N. U E N is that orange angle again. It's just they switch the U and the N. It still has, it's got the same two letters, the U and the N. They just went N E U. Oh, no, they didn't even switch the letters. It's just still U-E-N. So it's still that orange one. All right, so that purple one on the bottom and the orange one, adjacent or non-adjacent? Yes. Yes, adjacent. They are right next to each other. All right, and then N-E-T, which we already did up here, N-E-T, is the blue one. And S-E-U S-E-U, we did already. That's the purple one. They just switched the order of the letters. S-E-U is the same as U-E-S. So I'm looking at the blue one on the right and the purple one on the left. Are they adjacent or non-adjacent? Non-adjacent. Non they have to share a side. So I kind of think of adjacent angles. They're like best friends. They walk through the hallways, they hold hands, right? They're not boyfriend and girlfriend. She can't ever sit on his lap. They're not boyfriend and girlfriend. They're just holding hands. They're just best friends, okay? When this situation happens, that's when you have the third person comes in and breaks up the best friends, right? 
Now there's something in between them. Okay? They're not best friends anymore. There's somebody in between them, so they're no longer adjacent. Adjacent angles are best friends. So the blue and the, the orange are adjacent. The orange and the purple are adjacent. Those are my only adjacent angles in that picture. Okay? Questions about it? Identifying whether or not they're adjacent? No. Okay. Next thing we're going to do is we're going to look at the angle addition postulate. I'm going to come over here to my little blank side, and I'm just going to review something real quick. Remember we did the segment addition postulate. And it said if I have a segment that has a length, and it's attached to another segment that has a length, and it makes a new total segment. I don't know why I did A, C. I should have done A, B. Eh. We'll go E. Skipping every other letter for some weird reason. The segment addition postulate says I can take the left side of that segment plus the right side of that segment, and it's going to equal the whole segment. Remember that? Yes. The angle addition postulate does the same exact thing, but instead of we're working with segments, we're working with angles. angles. But they have to be angles that are adjacent. adjacent. They have to be adjacent angles. Okay? So, for example, find the measure of angle KLM if angle KLB equals 26 degrees and the measure of angle MLB equals 60 degrees. So let's see what we're trying to find. We're trying to find angle KLM. So K to L to M. That's that whole angle. It kind of looks like it's a right angle, but remember nothing said my picture to scale, so I can't for sure tell. Okay. And then they told me, so I'm looking for this orange angle. I know that KLB is 26 degrees. KLB, this angle in green, is 26 degrees. Oops, wrong way. I wanted to zoom in. And MLB, M. L, B. This pink angle right here is 60 degrees. So what we're going to be looking at is we are going to be saying if I am trying to find the whole big angle and I'm right here, I'm going to open up 26 degrees and then I'm going to open up another 60 degrees. So how far total did I open up? Right, you're just going to add those two together. So I'm going to say 26 degrees plus 60 degrees is going to give me my whole thing, which is 86 degrees. That is my segment addition postulate. Now you can get real fancy with it. This was just pretty simple numbers. You can get real fancy and do it in a proof and you have to write out your, um, given this picture, I have these two adjacent angles, so then I can use the ad angle adjacent, the angle addition postulate that says this plus this equals this. Then I substitute in the 26 and the 60 combined like terms and all the things, okay? So in a proof, it'd be a little bit more involved than this, but y'all, this one we could just look at. Let's look at the next two, and then we will do a proof. Because proofs are fun. It's like a puzzle. All right, the next one, find the measure of angle FGB. So FGB, so I'm going to be looking for this blue angle. I don't know what it is. This one right here that I put the question mark in it. The measure of angle FGH is 159. So F to G to H. So that's the whole angle is 159. 
And then the measure of angle BHG is 54. How can I find the blue angle? So that's 159 minus. Yeah, so I'm going to do 159. I'm going to take away the 54. And that gives me 104 degrees. Oh, it's 105, yes. That says 105. Kate's can't read. All right, let's look at the next one before the proof. The measure of angle GHC, GHC, is 60 degrees. The measure of angle CHI, CHI is 104 degrees. Find G, H, I. What do I do for this one? Do I subtract or add? Add. So I'm going to do my 60 degrees plus my 104 degrees. And that's going to give me 164. 164 degrees. Questions? Are we ready for a proof? I think we're ready. Okay. So, given angle CAT and angle TAD are adjacent angles. Angle CAT and angle TAD are adjacent angles. If you want to abbreviate angles with an angle symbol and an S, I will totally understand what you mean. And that was given to you. Now, what I like to do is I like to draw a picture as I go. So when I write that given, I'm going to draw the picture. I know I've got angle CAT. So I'm going to draw an angle, and I have no idea how big or small it is, but I'm going to label it as angle C, A, T. And I could have switched my C and my T, that would have been fine. Okay. Then the next one is angle T, A, D. Well, I've already got a T and an A, and I know they have to be adjacent to each other, so I'm just going to bring another line out here. And on it, I'm going to put D. So that CAT, the top angle, and TAD, the bottom angle, are next to each other. They are adjacent. Okay? So far, so good? Okay. Step two, my next given, the measure of angle CAT is 5x plus 20 degrees. The measure of angle CAT equals 5x plus 20 degrees. And again, I like to add my givens to my picture, so I'm going to write that in there. C-A-T, I'm going to see where it is. It's right here. And it is 5X plus 20. Okay. My next given, the measure of angle T-A-D is 10X plus 5. degrees given and I'm going to add that to my picture T A D is 10 X plus 5 and I have one more given I can add if you want to put all your givens right at the beginning we could start doing other stuff right now but I have one more given I'm going to go ahead and put it the measure of angle C A D equals 115. C, A, D is 115. All right. Any ideas what I should do next? I haven't written an equation to do substitution yet. I have to write an equation to substitute into before I can substitute. Huh? 
The postulate, okay, angle addition postulate. All right, what do I write for the angle addition postulate? The measure of angle CAT, the orange side, plus the measure of angle TAD, the green side, equals the measure of angle CAD, the whole angle. Now I can do what? Substitute. Now I can substitute in. So now I know that CAT equals 5x plus 20. Notice it's in parentheses. That's because it's saying that whole expression represents the degree. So just like if it was this segment is 5 centimeters, when I substitute it in, I don't have to substitute in the cm. I don't have to substitute in the units to do the math. We don't have to put in the parentheses and the, and the degree symbol. We can just substitute in the value, 5x plus 20. And then plus TAD is 10x plus 5. And then CAD is 115. If you do put in the parentheses and the degree symbol, it's not wrong. It's just extra information you've added in there. And then sometimes that confuses you because you see parentheses and you're like, I'm not sure what I'm supposed to distribute. What am I writing as my reason here? Substitution. Substitution. All right, now what? Our like terms. Our like terms. Okay, let's combine our like terms. So when I do that, I'm going to have how many total x's? 15. 15 x's. And constants? 25. 25 equals 115. That was combined like terms. Okay. What's next? Subtraction property of a Equality, I almost didn't get that out. I'm going to subtract 25 on both sides. So 15x plus 25 minus 25 is just 15x. And 115 minus 25 is 90. 90. Subtraction, property of equality. Remember, if you wrote the math in there, if you wrote the little minus 25 minus 25, it should be real small because it's not technically part of the proof. And then what am I going to do? Division. Division, property of equality. So I'm going to divide both sides by 15. 15x over 15 is just 1x. And 90 divided by 15 is 6, which is what we were trying to find. I was trying to prove that x equals 6. So can I write prove here? I proved it? No. No, I still have, I, I have had kids starting to do that now. What do I put here? Division, Division property of equality. Now, sometimes they don't ask you to prove what x equals. They want you to prove one of the angles. So then I would need to do substitution, right? So when it says here, find the value of each angle in the proof, we're going to substitute in that x. Yes, yes. Okay? So I'm going to come up here and I'm going to say, well, if x is 6, I can figure out what the orange angle is, right? 5 times 6 plus 20. What's 5 times 6? 30. 30. 30 plus 20. 50. So angle CAT is 50 degrees. The measure of angle CAT equals 50 degrees. And then the measure of angle TAD, if I substitute in 10x plus 5, where we know x now is 6. 10 times 6 is 60. 60 plus 5. 65. So the measure of angle TAD is 65. Degrees. And it does say find the value of each angle, but we already know that the measure of angle CAD, but I'm going to write it here just because it says to find all of them. CAD equals 115. Now, if we had done this as just a regular problem and not as a proof, so we didn't know for sure that x equaled 6, how would I know at this point that I can feel confident that x really did equal 6? Yeah, if I add these two adjacent angles together, they should equal 115. If they don't, then you need to go check your math because we did something wrong. 
Okay. You do have an assignment. On your assignment, um, it is going to ask you to substitute back in, and then it's going to skip a step here. So where you skip the step, you can just put simplify, because they're just simplifying. They're going straight from here. This 5 times 6 plus 20 all the way to the answer. They simplified the multiplication and the addition in one step. So you can just put simplify. So when you get to your assignment, if it seems like you're missing a step, simplify. Okay? All right. So I'll get you your assignment. It will be due on Monday.